Hello and welcome back to learnabouteyes.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a metal foreign body from the cornea at the slit lamp. This is an easy procedure that every eye doctor should master. So let's get to it. Before removing the foreign body, of course, you want to thoroughly examine the eye. Use your slit lamp at a high magnification to get a good look at the foreign body. Use the slit function to see how deep in the cornea it actually is. And definitely look for signs of perforation. Signs of perforation would be low IOP, corneal striae, blood in the AC, holes in the iris, cataract, or just a visible foreign body inside the AC. Also ask for the mechanism of trauma. A very common story you hear is, I was coming home from work, I was taking a shower, and all of a sudden I felt something in my eye. Another common story is, I was working above my head, I wasn't wearing glasses, and all of a sudden something fell into my eye. These two mechanisms are not to worry about. With these two mechanisms, usually there's just a small foreign body on top of the cornea. However, there are mechanisms where you should check for perforation more thoroughly. If your patient was drilling or grinding metal or using a hammer and a chisel, these are very dangerous activities that create high velocity projectiles that usually are hot and therefore melt through the cornea more easily and perforate the eye more easily. In these situations, please check very, very carefully if there's any sign of perforation. It's also smart to avert the eyelid to look for other foreign bodies, especially if you've seen vertical striae with the fluorescein dye. This is usually a sign that there's another foreign body under the eyelid. I will soon upload a video on how to easily avert any patient's eyelid, so you better subscribe to the channel and don't miss it. Now let's see what you have to do step by step to get that foreign body removed at the slit lamp. First, Definitely give the patient enough tetracaine or any other anesthetic drops so they don't have any pain. Relax the patient, they are not going to feel anything. If the patient is not cooperating well, use a lid speculum and have them look in the direction that gives you the best exposure of the foreign body and the best access to it. Use a higher magnification so you get a good view of the foreign body, but still have enough overview of the cornea so you know where you are. And if the patient moves just a little bit, you don't lose your view. Illuminate the foreign body with your slit slightly from the side, but don't make the slit too narrow. Otherwise, if the patient moves just a little bit, you lose your view again. Then use a needle to remove the corneal foreign body. I personally use a 25 gauge needle, but you can use anything from a 22 to a 30 gauge needle, depending on the size of the foreign body. To be able to hold the needle more easily, I don't like to hold it directly. I like to put it onto a syringe. A one milliliter, two or three milliliter syringe will do. To remove the foreign body, you want to go in under from one of the edges of the foreign body and then just tilt it up. The foreign body usually tilts out very easily. It can be tricky to actually take it away with the needle as it might stick to the cornea. If you can't take it with the needle, just use a Q-tip and catch it with that. Definitely never let it out of your sight. They can hide somewhere under the lid and then you'll have to go look for it again. If the foreign body has been in the cornea for a certain amount of time, there's usually some rust. To remove the rust, you can either use the needle to lift the biggest chunks out of there as well. Here's a video of me removing some of that rust from the corneal stroma. And then if you just have a little bit left, use a corneal burr to remove the rest and make sure there's no rust left in the cornea. Here's a quick tip what you can do if you've already burred quite deep into the cornea, but there's still some rust left. Give the patient an antibiotic ointment and have him use it for like four or five times a day and see them the next day. You will see the cornea is much easier to burr afterwards and the rust is just super easy to take away. Another very important tip, before you send the patient home, tell them that after about 30 minutes, when the anesthesia has gone, they will feel like there's another foreign body in their eyes. You won't believe how many patients I've had coming back to the office telling me, all of a sudden there's another foreign body in my eye. And of course it's just the abrasion from you removing the foreign body before. Speaking of post-operative management, 
I usually give my patients an antibiotic drop or ointment four times a day for four days. I prefer ointment because it gives some kind of a protective layer and protects from more foreign body sensation. Beware that you should not be giving ointments if you have any reason to suspect a chemical burn. For example, if someone has concrete in their eye. Apart from antibiotic drops, I always give them artificial teardrops and tell them to use them hourly or even more to soothe the pain. I sometimes even recommend oral painkillers as the pain can be quite severe. If it's a sunny day, I also recommend using sunglasses as these patients usually have photophobia. And the last question, do we need to see those patients in a follow-up? If the foreign body is in the central corneal area, in the visual axis, in the pupil area like this one, I would definitely see them again. They can build scars that you could potentially prevent by using some steroids. If the foreign body is far in the periphery and is unlikely to cause any visual symptoms later, I usually just instruct the patient that the pain is supposed to go away completely and the symptoms are supposed to be completely gone by two to three days after removing the foreign body and have them come back if that is not the case. Otherwise, I don't see them again. That was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and share it with your friends. If you have any ideas or suggestions what my next videos should be about, please comment down below and I will make those videos for you. See you in the next one.